Hello everyone. Hi, my name is Casey Ajindu and welcome to my channel. Uh, this is my first video that I'm putting out, so bear with me if I uh, kind of working my way through it. Uh, so yes, my story is very interesting actually. I came to the United States September 10th, 2001. So for those of you guys who know about 9-11 uh, and the impact it had in the United States, I was one of the last people to get through the airports without as crazy security as it was as it is right now. So when I got here in 2001, I lived with my family in Chicago. Uh, they were very strict. They had African, you know, the African community had some very interesting requirements that they wanted me to uh, follow through with, which I didn't agree with, um, and I ended up finding myself homeless in San Antonio for about two weeks. Over a period of two weeks, I got to meet some very good people i got to get i actually got taken in by the school the university of texas san antonio offered me an opportunity to stay on the campus i didn't have to pay much for it i got to attend the school in university of texas san antonio which i didn't complete but i had a chance to meet some very very solid people uh, over time so i went through a very very interesting phase in my life uh just kind of loafing around and really know what i wanted to do and uh, tried my hands at multiple businesses, but of course I wasn't very committed to anything that I was doing. Everything just seemed to be a hobby, right? It really was not uh, a main focus that I wanted to, you know, build something from. I thought I was committed, but I had things that were also more important to me at the time. Uh, I had a mom who uh, came also from Africa, went through a lot of hardship to get here. Uh, when she got here, she, you know, lived about 10 years or so before they found out that she had cancer and she was actually going to be, uh, they gave her about three months to live. Well, I was very fortunate that she lived a little longer than three months. She lived about six years after her diagnosis and till, until she passed away in 2019. Well, prior to that time, um, I always wanted to do something for her. I, you know, like most boys, most sons, they have these big dreams of being able to accomplish so much and being also being able to do something for their mom. And what I had, what I didn't understand at the time was there were some commitments and requirements that I needed to do, that I needed to be able to show the world in order for me to qualify to be that person of high value that could now turn around and help my mother become someone who can be proud so over that period of time what i did was i uh you know just loafed around didn't really do much for myself tried my hands at multiple businesses from a transportation business that didn't really do too well uh even up to a liquor store that i opened from scratch that didn't do too well as well uh but again i completely blame myself for all those things because my commitments were always shared uh so when i found out in 2019 that my mom was kind of at the, on her deathbed i tried to kick things into full gear but at the time i had kind of gotten married to someone for financial reasons which was, which was very wrong on my part and i ended up finding myself in a position where i was getting divorced actually i got divorced in january and my mother passed away in april uh, 2019. I have a book that I wrote that details my experience. It's called Me, Money and Experience, How I Made It From Zero. And what I did in that book was I explained from my childhood, you know, the experiences that I had that allowed me to feel the need to not have to work hard. Again, those were bad commitments on my part and decisions that I made, but I decided to take those that shortcut approach in life and i found out that i had paid dearly for it up until i was around 35 years old so at 35 years old uh, right before my mom had passed away um, i started to kind of understand that everything starts with the mindset i started working on my mindset my goal was to improve the way i thought to help myself become a more uh active thinker if you will and a more doer as of the you know the things that i wanted to do in life I built myself a goal list and I said, what can I do to be able to help myself become a better version of myself? But more importantly, what I also wanted to do was to be able to help people. Um, I understood that helping people involved, you know, knowledge first and then application of that knowledge. And then when you start to see success and you see that knowledge as, as something that is actively happening for you in your life now it becomes easy for you to take that knowledge and share that knowledge with other people and also help impact their lives as well so what i found out was um a lot of things can help you get to your path of success but what really helped me to my path of success started with investing in real estate 
Now, there are multiple steps to invest in real estate, uh, starting from, you know, some projects that require very little money down, little involvement. Um, and then you have the really, really, you know, big project. Now, a lot of people I've talked to in the past have asked questions about, well, what do you think, what do you advise for a newcomer, someone who's never kind of got into real estate? How should they get started into real estate? And that's kind of why I want to talk to you guys today. I want to share with you guys what helped me become successful and the things that actually made me feel that now I am in a position where I'm seeing success as a repeated occurrence in my life. So let me talk to you guys a little bit about what happened and how things changed for me. In 2019, when my mom died, she died in April of 2019. I had no money to bury her. As a matter of fact, I remember looking at my account and my account had negative $24.14. That's correct. I still remember that number till today. It stuck to me because all I could think of was I'm a 35, 36 year old man. Um, I had a lot of imp I had a lot of goals and a lot of things that I wanted to do for myself. And here I am with practically nothing, right? Uh, and I, of course I had a dead mom now in the mor mortuary in the morgue that I had to bury. I didn't have the money to bury her. Um, she sat in the morgue for about three months and I was in so much pain and you know mental anguish and I said this cannot be the life that I for me so I made a decision then and there I said I was never going to allow myself be broke again I know a lot of you have probably been in that position wondering how can you make that change and I'm here to tell you that if it happened for me it can happen for you as well so to kind of give you guys a little bit more insight as to how it happened for me I want to share with you how real estate investing made a huge change in my life so the first thing that I noticed that happened for me was when my mom had passed away and she had been in the morgue for right around May, I had, a, I had an opportunity to start learning about wholesale and real estate. And in that process was when someone told me, you know, you can get involved in real estate with no money down without actually having to have good credit. Of course, when you have a negative $224.14 in your account, chances are that your credit is bad, right? So yes, I had bad credit as well. Uh, had no money in my pocket. I didn't even have a bank account that, because <laughs> you know, my account was a negative. So <clears throat> any cash that I would get, that cash would be used to us, you know, whatever expenses that I could afford to pay for. Uh, getting those eviction notices were a norm. And believe it or not, I had a girlfriend that uh, loved me and I was, and she, I'm still with my girlfriend and she loves me still today. But at the time, I always wondered to myself like, well, based on where I am, why is this person with me? And it was a blessing because now we've got to grow together and, you know, she's got to see the other side. And I can imagine, you know, her belief in me is one of the reasons I think that I'm also here as well. So over that time frame, um, I found out about wholesale and real estate and what I ended up doing was I talked to a few people, they explained the process to me, uh, they told me that you know you can get involved in this business, you can help people and in the same process help yourself. So I, I got on, you know, I got on making phone calls. I called a bunch of people, uh, believe it or not, I used, and we didn't use yellow pages, but I had white pages. Uh, my girlfriend paid the $4 a month for the white pages. I was able to find, uh, just mark out a bunch of properties. I'll put a circle around the property, uh, the area and find the names and just call people. And I was fortunate that a gentleman answered the phone. His name was, uh, Dallas and this gentleman answered the call talked to me over the phone and agreed to meet me. So I went out to meet him. My mom had just, my, my mom was still in the mortuary. My family was reaching out to me and uh, very, very aggressive with the fact that I wasn't able to bury her and telling me I needed to figure a way to do it. I was under so much pressure. And I went to Dallas simply with the intent to try to sell him on why I needed to wholesale his house. So when I got to meet Dallas, uh, we started talking and I found out that we had so much common ground. Over that period of time, I noticed from Dallas that his wife had just passed away. He'd been married to his wife for about 45 years. He had four sons. Uh, three of his sons were dead. And he only had one living son and one living grandson left. And at that point, it hit me. It was, it was like an epiphany for me. I understood something that was far greater than myself. I saw that this, it was no longer about me and what I wanted. It was about what can I do for Dallas because at 80 years old with a heart problem, 
with no not enough money he was being taken advantage of by the banks the banks had done something called a reverse mortgage and if you, any of you know what a reverse mortgage is or don't know what a reverse mortgage is a reverse mortgage is where the bank becomes pretty much the homeowner and you become the bank so the banks actually sends you a mortgage payment every month and believe it or not those payments are so minimal and it's so almost an insulting amount that you really can't survive off that. But it helped him at that point it, to be something like a supplemental income that came into his life. So when I got to meet Dallas and we talked, he said something to me. He said, Casey, I don't know if I have long to live, but what I'm gonna say is my whole life, I've always wanted to have $10,000. I've always wanted to say that I have $10,000 in my bank. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. And I said, if I can make sure that you have $10,000, would that work for you? He said, absolutely. I said, okay, great. We looked at the numbers. We saw that his reverse mortgage, they had a crazy balance of almost $120,000. Um, and, you know, I wanted to make sure he had $10,000. I also understood that, you know, there was also a mechanics lien on his property based on the conversations we have. Now, again, I didn't know all these things at the time, all these terminologies at the time but I know these things now so I can share these things with you but what I would say is I found out about this mechanics lien I found out about the reverse mortgage he had and I said Dallas I'm going to make sure we get you ten thousand dollars so I put the property on the contract I had a few people look at the contract I got fortunate enough to meet someone who had a huge buyers list and I ended up selling that property for a hundred and seventy five thousand dollars from the contract price I had it with Dallas at 145. So that deal alone netted me $30,000, which the seller, you know, didn't have to pay any closing costs. So he got his 10,000. He did have to pay his prepaid and his taxes and the buyer paid all the closing costs and they bought the property at 175,000, did what they had to do to it. And I'm sure they made a lot of money from the property, but the end result, Gave me 30,000, gave me the ability to now bury my mom, and gave me a lot more flexibility in my lifetime at that point. You know, a little side note, I had to borrow $100 in earnest money from my girlfriend to actually help me with putting that earnest money into the bank to just be able to put the property on the contract because the contract stated there was an amount that I had to put as earnest money towards the property. So. After the process was completed, it took us about 21 days to close uh, from when I when Dallas put the property on the contract with me late May to right around June, July. Um, the next step was right as soon as we closed, Dallas was so happy with the process. He was so happy that I came through on my promise. He told me, he said, I have a gentleman. He's a friend of my son, my son's best friend. They grew up together. His mom and his dad just passed away. He, they have a house in Dallas and they want you to help them do the same thing you did for me. I told him about you and he wants to meet you. So I got to meet his, his friend's uh, son's friend. We were able to do the same thing for his son's friend. I put that property on the contract for $180,000. You know, he didn't have any liens, so he was gonna get walk away with the 180,000. He was very happy with that. And I found a buyer to actually buy the property from me for $220,000. Uh, we were able to close on that deal, believe it or not, in 14 days. So between the span of May, end of May-ish, June, early June, till right around July, end of July, uh, I had made a total of $75,000, $70,000, right around $70,000, that's correct. Right, I made 40,000 from the, the deal from my first client's referral and I made 30,000 from my first client. So I ended up with a $70,000 check. Uh, up until then, I had never seen anything greater than thirty-five to $50,000 a year in, in salaries. So it was probably the most money I'd ever seen. So it was a big time life changing event for me. It allowed me to travel the world. It allowed me to give, it gave me a lot of exposure. And then when I came back from all my trips and vacations and enjoying, you know, the newfound wealth, if you will call it that, I understood something and I said, you know, there's a, there's a way here and there's a way that people can be helped. 
And I felt that it was up to me to come up with a way and a strategy to help people. So I got into wholesaling. I found a partner. We started making a lot of these deals happen. Uh, and it just started coming and it was just something that we started doing. And in 2020, when everything shut down, the pandemic shut down, we made the most money we've ever made. We were selling a lot of deals. We we're closing a lot of deals. And most of these deals, we didn't even go to the properties. We talked to the sellers, uh, got on the phone with them. They loved our pitch, what we had to offer. We signed, sent them a contract through DocuSign. They sent it back. We sent the pictures of the properties to, you know, buyers. The buyers didn't even have to go see the properties. They loved the properties and they purchased these properties from us, something called Sight Unseen. So we were making 20 to 15, 15 to $20,000 per deal over a span of 12 months without even having to leave the comfort of our home. And that's kind of one of the things I want to talk to you guys about. I want to give you guys knowledge. I want to share with you guys tools and things that would help you to be able to accomplish, accomplish the same things that I was able to accomplish and now have the same lifestyle that I'm able to have because there's so much meat on the bone for everyone, guys, ladies, and there's so much opportunities for every single one of us to be able to kind of tap into this and enjoy the wealth that this brings. So follow me in this journey. I would love to keep sharing with you guys a lot of information about wholesale, about real estate investing. Uh, fortunately enough, I've been able to now branch out of the wholesale industry. I'm actually doing a lot more development deals now. So ground up development deals, multifamily projects. Um, I'm actually working on, you know, projects that involve rehabs, just the different parts of real estate now because I have the capital and the ability and most importantly, the time to now be able to do these things and help myself increase my income. So I want to get you guys to do be able to do the same thing. Trust me, it starts with the first step. I am completely understanding that it's everyone might not necessarily feel like this is something that they can do. But if you truly believe in yourself, if you look at the adversity that you've been through in life, if you truly believe that this is something that you can do, and if you have a solid why, then my question is, why not you? Let's get you guys started. Let's build you guys up. Let's show you the way. Let's give you the tools. Let's have you guys go out there and let's have you guys go out there and kill it. I trust you guys. I believe in you guys. Let's get this 